What does the reptile community mean to you? Uh, everything. Everything. If you've been a part of this community, you've probably seen it yourself. People on Facebook fighting or Reddit or in the comments section of a YouTube channel, but that's kind of the only place that you're gonna see it. The actual community, when we get together at expos, at events, you don't see that at all. And that's because the reptile community, although it's small in size, it's mighty, it's powerful. There's really a lot of us for how small this niche is. And those people you see on the internet, being actually toxic, tiny percentage, very small percentage. The majority of the community looks like this. It's a bunch of people coming together in unity. We want the same things. We wanna keep reptiles the best way that we possibly can. We wanna make sure that these reptiles have the best possible lives and it's enriching to us. Because at the end of the day, we keep these reptiles as best as we can, but we do it for us. Even the frog wants to weigh in. Frogs. And I'm gonna ask some of my friends too what they think, what the reptile hobby means to them, so you don't have to watch my dumb bald face yammer on too long. Dave Kaufman, what does the reptile hobby mean to you? The reptile hobby is more than just a hobby. It's a lifestyle, it's a way of life. You know, for me, these animals have enriched my life more than any other thing in my life. I talk to a lot of herpers all over the world and it's the one thing that we share in common is our passion for these animals. But here is the gist of it. The vocal minority, the people who haven't seen the sun since the Obama administration, these people that are downstairs with their Cheeto dusted fingers, monsters all over their desk, writing mean comments on the internet in their mom's basement. That is who is being rude on the internet. Those are the toxic ones, and you don't see those people at expos. They don't come out of their cave. They're not gonna actually say negative things to your face. They do it behind a keyboard and a screen where they're anonymous because what they have to say isn't important. And the only problem with it, well, there's a few. It could hurt your feelings. Do I need to call you a wambulance? Wah, 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 wah. But I think at, in this day and age, we know that the internet is kind of a breeding ground for these people. That's the only place you're gonna encounter them. So let that roll off your back, right? Water off a duck's back. The other reason is it makes us look bad. And that brings us to another myth. I think I get this all the time. If I do a video called Bearded Dragons Suck, and it's a video about how bearded dragons are actually awesome, but I'm trying to bait you in. If you think bearded dragons suck, you want confirmation bias, you're gonna watch that video and I'm trying to change your mind. I do a lot of videos like this, a lot of us do. It's the recipe for success. That's the reason that my channel grows. People like negativity, but I don't. I will take a negative subject or a negative tagline and I will jam positivity down your throat. And I get all the time, well, what if PETA or whoever, like these animal rights groups who actually don't care about animals whatsoever, what if they take this and they use it as an example of why bearded dragons are bad and they ban them? That is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Or if I do a video called top five safe venomous snakes and it's a video about how don't keep venomous snakes at all. There's better things like false water cobras and hognose snakes that are rear fang venomous. Oh, well you're promoting venomous, like watch five seconds of the video. But then when I go to an event, people will come up to me and say, hey, that was a really cool idea. I saw what you did there. People who are actually serious about these reptiles. And that is who the reptile community is. The reptile community isn't these people talking junk on the internet. The reptile community are people who come together and lift each other up. So I went and I asked some of my friends. Emily, what does the reptile community mean to you? Um, I think the reptile community is a collective effort of a bunch of like-minded people who just want to learn more about the animals that fascinate us in the wild. In this particular case, cold-blooded animals. It seems like with other communities, people are secretive of what they've learned, but with reptiles, we're all so open to teaching each other what we've learned and how to best breed this species. It's such an open and positive uh, environment that, you know, it's, just, it's a great community. It's just positive and learning forward. And I think one of the reasons that you get such positive feedback at actual events is because it's a bunch of people. 
I go to this event called Retic Fest, all about reticulated pythons. I don't have a reticulated python, but I met a lot of really interesting people who had a lot of really interesting things to say. I'm not going into an echo chamber. That is what is going to kill any industry, any hobby, any community, is just confirmation bias. All these people just coming together with the same opinions. If you get people with different opinions and you can speak about it like adults, you can change your own mind, change other people's minds, add things, kind of come together, meet in the middle, that's what the reptile community is. Now that's not to say that there won't be uh, disagreements, but there's a difference between constructive criticism and piling on. And I don't wanna talk about the internet anymore. The internet is not the reptile community. In the community, the actual community, if someone says, hey Adam, I think that maybe you shouldn't keep your boa constrictor in an enclosure that's only a foot and a half high, you'd be better off putting it in a three foot enclosure. Well, that person is right. This is an actual comment in a conversation that I had two or three years ago, and now I keep a boa in a three foot enclosure. They have a lot of room to climb, and I might even give them a little bit more space. The opposite of that is piling on. If you're in a Facebook group or whatever, and someone says something, uh, you know, I, I saw that in the background, there was a, a thermometer and it said that the hotspot was 86, but we know the hotspot should be between 87 and 90. It's like, well, you know that this is not hurting the animal. You know that this is a second that you saw a picture. You know that you're not doing anything constructive, but people will start to pile on because they want to be right. It isn't about what's best for the animal. It's about being right. And that is toxic. That's kind of what the basis of the toxicity in the community is. And there's so little of it, it's just loud when it's there. What the community actually is, is creating bonds. You could actually start an entire career based on a friendship that was created because you like the same thing. You were both part of the reptile community. So again, I ask, what does the reptile community mean to you? Uh, everything, everything. Uh, it's a funny thing. You know, you, you see all these guys doing their thing and I'm doing my thing and then Garrett's like, hey, we're pretty good friends. Why don't you come in and do your thing here? And it just opens up this whole door that I wasn't aware of in the community. There's communities within communities. And I think a great example of that is what Garrett has kind of created with his community. I mean, it's my community and they mean everything. That's my life. This is where I live. I mean, very seriously, like, I used to attend reptile shows and I'd see my reptile buddies and that was kind of fun. It was definitely a very conscious decision when I decided to move into this space professionally and say I'm going to be a professional breeder, that this community would be where I lived, you know what I mean? It's what I'm going to think about almost as much as my family, you know? And so the investment, the personal investment, the emotional investment into it was huge, it was, it's definitely not something to be taken lightly. So this is where I live, this is where I work. You know what I mean? So I wanted to kind of bring that all, let's all love each other, can't we all get along, you know, vibe to that. And now all of a sudden, there's hundreds of people coming together in Pittsburgh, none of us are from there. I drove four and a half hours, there's people all the way from Phoenix coming to be part of this, to hang out with each other and have a great time zero issues the entire day. Hundreds of people with differing opinions and everyone was kind to each other. Or even coming together at something like a snake discovery build off, which I got to do last week. The video is coming, hit subscribe if you haven't already. The enclosures were insane, but different. Very different, very different ideologies. The entire like purpose of why the, the enclosures were built was different and there were disagreements of how to keep certain animals, but there was a lot of aha moments too. So you get a bunch of positive-minded people in the same community or different fractions of the same community and you learn different things. So I'm building this enclosure and then I start to think, huh, you're right, I should do this instead. Okay, that's, the video's next week. I'll go into it more then. The reptile community in real life is wearing each other's merch and patting each other on the back and giving each other criticisms that is constructive and positive or getting tattoos of your friends logos for their business. Big shout out to Stella, thank you so much. You did a fantastic job. Here's her Instagram. She actually went and got a uh, Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles tattoo as well. Like, just on a whim. That's what the reptile community is. I'm not saying you have to go and get the Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles tattoo. If you do, let me know and I'll put it in a video. Thank you, you guys are freaking awesome. But anyway, I'll leave her Instagram there and it's up here 
also. All I'm saying, what the actual community is, is coming together and being kind to one another. This community is not toxic. It's a small fraction, a tiny minority that is loud on the internet. If you are nervous about joining the community, you don't wanna to go to expos because you don't want to see what happens on the internet happen in real life, I promise you, it doesn't. Nobody is going to attack you. And if some crazy person decided that they wanted to come up to you and say something rude, you are gonna have so many people who have your back. Everybody together, it's a positive community. So I think I could ramble on and on about this, but uh, instead, I wanna say thanks to Snake Discovery last week inviting me to their build off video coming this week. I wanna say thanks to Garrett Hartle and everyone at Reach Out Reptiles. You did a fantastic job. So there you go. Please, if you haven't already, hit like and subscribe. Helps the channel like you wouldn't believe. A special thanks to the Patreon supporters. You guys are freaking amazing. If it wasn't for you guys, doing trips like that would be a lot harder. You guys get extra content. You guys have already seen my enclosure from the enclosure build off from last week. So if you wanna see that more of stuff. Anyway, for as little as a dollar a month, you get a bunch of extra stuff. And uh, cause I do videos twice a week. That means that I'll see you. Well, here, let's roll this. This is what the community actually is. This is Retech Fest last week. This is what I think of when I think of the reptile community. Next week.